Hello all, welcome back to the tutorials. So uh, we will continue our discussion on the I2C which we have done in the last tutorial. Um, so in the last tutorial we have just given a brief of what I2C is and how the connectivity would be and what are the signals associated with it. In this we will try to uh, talk more about uh, the I2C communication. Um, so uh, the, the, um, first of all we will talk about the I2C modes. So whether it be i2c or spa we have been saying that uh, these are all uh, synchronous communication mechanisms uh, uh, and a serial uh, communication uh, protocol so when we say synchronous clock is definitely involved in it and uh, in spa i have seen that uh, um, it is up to the master to generate whatever the clock it is possible and then uh, um, it depends on the slave um, operating frequency again um, now in I2C also it's the similar way but in I2C we have uh, a standardized modes of communication which define the maximum uh, uh, speed of communication whereas SPA doesn't have it. So and again it all depends on the clock which is generated by the master. Um, so uh, the modes are like uh, uh, standard mode which can operate up to 100 kbps maximum and there's a fast mode which can operate up to 400 kbps there's fast mode plus which can operate up to 1 mbps there's high speed mode uh, which is 3.4 mbps and uh, right now we have ultra fast mode uh, which can uh, have communication speeds up to 5 mbps so this is the maximum speed for any mode that is possible uh, so most of the cases uh, mm, we don't operate up to that maximum speed unless required because i2c is a low speed uh, communication protocol uh, which is used in embedded mm, so generally if you see most of the embedded engineers even though they select high speed mode uh, chipset they operate uh, up to 100k and 400 uh, kbps speeds uh, so this is what uh, modes are in i2c mm, and then continuing further uh, we will talk about how the communication happens between master and slave um, so in SPI, we have seen that uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, data communication happens, first uh, um, the, uh, the master would initiate a clock and then uh, send a command to a slave based on which the slave decides what need to be done. Similarly, here, um, the first thing which we have to remember is that uh, um, there uh, there was no address involved in I2C there is address involved so it is little bit complex compared to um, uh, SPA communication so first we will see how the uh, message format will be in I2C so this is how it looks like initially the master would would send a start which says the uh, which indicates that uh, the communication has started and then it sends the address um, uh, the read uh, the read write whether we, we need to read or write from the slave and then correspondingly there will be a ACK or NAC from the I2C slave and based on that uh, uh, the debt, uh, this, the master starts uh, uh, sending the um, data um, so <coughs> what is start and stop condition is what we have to understand here so start condition is nothing but uh, the master tries to make the uh, data line high to low or transact the line high to low when the clock is uh, in high condition so primarily once uh, the master decides to communicate to the slave this is what uh, uh, the indication would be given by the um, master to say that it wants to communicate and then um, there will be a stop condition again associated with it uh, uh, which uh, where uh, the master makes the data line um, or um, communicates over the data line making it uh, uh, low to high uh, under uh, clock high condition so these are the start and stop condition where uh, the i2c communication starts and the i2c communication stops and this is all initiated by the master so in between what happens is what is important uh, but again uh, uh, start and stop is uh, uh, what uh, um, is important to engineer to know when to start and when to stop and also it is the protocol um, between the master and the slave now again <coughs> the first thing um, in i2c communication is that once the master uh, sends that start bit 
uh, where we have se uh, seen that uh, the high to low condition uh, when SCL is high. Uh, during that condition, uh, after or after that condition, I mean to say, um, the first thing which uh, master should do is send a address over uh, the HDL line uh, to know. Uh, whether a particular slave is present or not so um, for that uh, the slave address should be known initially this is where most of the i2c um, uh, communication fails and embedded engineers uh, fail during their initial bring ups uh, so the first thing uh, is determining the slave address and then uh, uh, embedding that uh, slave address into the code of the master so that master will transmit the exact address that is required so here why address is required is simple there is no slave select the only way the master knows the slave is by sending the address and <coughs> that too it has to send a, a valid address and as we said it should be uh, immediately after the start condition and then after the start condition this master sends uh, um, read by write bit which indicates to the slave that uh, a read or write cycle is uh, uh, followed by that so this is how uh, the address uh, uh, communication happens and then um, now we have talked about the address we have talked about the read write and let us see how uh, the slave knows whether a data is present or not or what is a valid condition for uh, 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 clocking data so you can see here um, you know that there is a data uh, clock high and a clock low condition so during the clock low condition is what uh, the data would be changed and during the high condition the data would be stable you can see here so this is what uh, uh, the valid condition is uh, in an i2c communication to say that there is a uh, valid data that is present on sda mm, so <coughs> it is important that uh, uh, embedded engineers during their i2c coding follow this so that uh, uh, a proper data is being fed to uh, the i2c slave and then continuing further now we have seen there is a address sent there is a read write bit sent and uh, um, there is a um, the next step is to um, see whether we can uh, uh, communicate proper data or not so before going to ACK and NAC uh, we, we have seen how the data is being uh, um, input from master to the slave and once the data is sent uh, where uh, the data is sent in bytes uh, the next thing is that the master should know and especially in I2C, uh, we have something called acknowledgement and uh, no acknowledgement uh, from the slave to indicate that the data has been received properly. Whereas in SPA, we don't have NAC and ACK. So once you send the data, you don't know whether the data has been received by the slave or not. Um, but in uh, I2C communication, um, the slave sends ACK and NAC uh, um, or ACK or NAC. Uh, based on the uh, status of the data so uh, if it has received properly it will send an acknowledgement and uh, if it has not received the data um, or a erroneous data it sends a NAC uh, now <coughs> if a NAC is received by the master it is a responsibility of the master to resend the byte again uh, so that uh, the uh, proper communication is uh, um, happening and uh, one of the thing uh, uh, which we have to say is uh, uh, in SPA we have seen there is a, a selection in the master uh, uh, configuration whether a MSB is to be put first or LSB is to be um, input first and again uh, it again depends on the slave configuration. So here in I2C communication when you are inputting and outputting data MSB should always be done and one more small thing uh, which we have to remember is that um, in I2C uh, you can see here the, the clock uh, can be held low by the slave uh, so that the data gets stabilized or uh, um, the slave um, can uh, do its operations and uh, release the clock uh, to indicate to the master that it is ready for uh, the next uh, transactions. So in this condition the slave has that uh, authority to hold the clock low so that uh, 
um, there, there is no data that is being sent uh, from the master uh, which can be uh, lead to an act from the slave. So um, this is one more additional thing which we can say uh, is part of the I2C communication and here uh, for the act or the NAC bit to be received from slave, uh, the master sends a additional clock cycle after it has sent the data so that uh, the, the slave can send its act or NAC bit. So this is all uh, that happens uh, in the I2C communication. Uh, so we will discuss uh, in detail again um, with a complete message format in I2C once uh, uh, we just wanted to give how the data is present, how the address is put, how the start and stop condition would be, how the ACK and NAC is received from the uh, slave. Mm. Uh, hope you had a uh, view of uh, the things happening. And then <coughs> continuing further on the I2C lines, uh, uh, so as a part of I2C protocol you have only clock and the data signals um, but if you see the hardware of the slave there will be an additional signal called interrupt signal um, which helps the master uh, to know when the slave is ready to uh, send communication or it is ready to receive any communication so um, this interrupt could be active high or active low which would be communicate which would be connected to the gpio of the master and uh, um, it is uh, being uh, uh, monitored in an interrupt uh, state um, and once there is a change in the uh, state uh, from the slave the master would receive that interrupt uh, um, and then it will try to send uh, the, the required data or any other configurations to the slave. So this is an additional pin that would be there which is not part of the I2C protocol but uh, some of the slaves have this signal so that it facilitates a proper communication between the master and slave. So these are the points we want to discuss in I2C in this tutorial. Uh, we will discuss in detail in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.